there we go okay i believe we are live right welcome everybody welcome to a, a thursday show something slightly out of the ordinary um i'm pleased to say i've got lonnie back on it we were just saying before we went live it's been a while since we've had a chat so how are you well oh, okay yeah no i have i had the i made the rookie mistake nick you know what i'm talking about where you have the uh <laughs> the video playing in the background hey guys my name's lonnie lonnie honeycutt uh also known as garage flips on youtube so pleased to be back with you nick and uh be talking to your guys out in the uk so appreciate you having me on buddy yeah it's great to have you back we've got a load of people already in the in the side chat um what's a couple of quick hellos peter is almost always one of the first in so peter ray's in there bum crack picker uh <laughs> epic, epic username have you not seen him before oh i've seen him plenty oh, of times okay <laughs> um so yeah welcome along basically the idea behind this is i've been trying to do a few of these where i i get a, a youtuber friend on who has an interest or a specialty a little bit and I started thinking about electronics. And I remember when I started watching you in the early days, Lonnie, you were big into electronics. I don't know if you've moved away from it more, but or you've gone more generalist, but your early days, you were sharing a lot of really cool electronic stuff. You know, those early videos you were putting out. And that's what got me, that's what pulled me into your channel in the first place. Mm. So I thought it would be cool to just get you on and and learn a little bit about what you look for, the sort of electronics you go for, and and any hints and tips you have. So okay yeah, cool do you still do uh, primarily electronics i know you you sell kind of you've kind of gone my route which is dabbling in everything is that mm. fair to say yeah i i have not moved away from electronics i still love electronics i really do but i found that i was specialized too much early on in electronics video games stuff like that right um, and i found i had really had to branch out now i'm like selling uh, man, I sell everything. If you look at my channel, you'll see, like I sell, I learned like a ton about board games from you, from this channel. Yeah. Like I, I learned a lot about that and toys. I got into that. And then I got into selling jeans and, um, hell you name it, dude, I will sell anything, but I still do love electronics and I, I pick them up when I can find them. So yeah, I got the feeling, as I say, from when I first found out about your channel and got chatting to you, it, it's more of a, maybe more of a passion of yours, the vintage electronics. You had some really cool pickups in those early days. Yeah, I, I, I've been into electronics for a long time, Nick. When I was 18, I enlisted in the Air Force, okay? Mm -hmm. And um, I went to basic electronics school, and that I had like a... I was doing sat satcom and wideband in the Air Force, and we had to go through all this electronics training to do it. I was like a maintenance guy, okay? And so uh -huh. that's where it kind of started for me, you know, and then I got into soldering and hobby electronics and Arduino and this and that. I actually have another channel, Nick. Um, I don't know if we've talked about it before, but I've got another channel that's all about electronics. How have I never known that? I don't know. I don't know. We, we've never talked about it, so we could talk about it now, I guess. But um, I've, I've that's, actually... That's mm -hmm. interesting. That that kind of makes sense that you have that, that, that confidence to buy and sell electronics and that passion for it because of your past. I mean, you know, our mutual friends are here. He used to work in Howard selling hi-fi and, and he knows right. a lot about all of that sort of stuff. So he's got the confidence to... To, to really jump in and have a go. So, so it makes sense. You know, that all adds up to me now. It makes sense to me. Yeah, my, my first foray onto YouTube wasn't this channel. Actually, I think I might be logged into that channel now. Uh, Garage Geek Guy is how I have it branded. But um, that was my first foray into YouTube was I was building like hobbyist type robots. Uh, I made like uh, one time I built a um, clock using a light bright. And instead of having the light bright pegs, I put LEDs in and then I put a microcontroller inside of it and they would light up like a clock or you could program it to do whatever you wanted, really. Wow. And uh, yeah, I mean, actually, um, when I made that project, I had the editors from Make Magazine contact me and they said, hey, would you do a little write up on your project? And it ended up, yeah, it was cool, man. It ended up on uh, hackaday.com, picked it up too. So I got a bunch of exposure from that. And then I got paid like, 
Um, I think they paid me $500 to write a one page article for make magazine. So that was pretty cool. That's the only time I've ever been published. That is epic. I want that. <laughs> we should just talk about this. That's, that's fun. <laughs> yeah. No, it, it's fun, dude. It, it's a lot of fun. Um, and believe it or not, like the garage flips channel is my passion right now. And I've got like a hundred and I think 180,000 total views on the whole channel. Mm. Okay. Which I know compared to your, your channel is like pretty small. Uh, but my other channel has like in excess of 3 million views. So it's actually the bigger success of the two. No, you what? Know? That's so cool. I'm itching yeah. to go and have a look now. <laughs> <laughs> go check it out, man. Check it out. It's fun. I, I see that uh, Jory's in there, uh, a fellow six pack uh, guest that's just popped in to say hi. We were just yeah. saying we went we, we went live. I'm gonna have to drop in again and say hi to you guys. It's been too long on the six pack. How's that going? I've missed the last few. Man, it's been um, it's been really interesting. I think I've been having fun. Like, how can it go bad when you have some friends sitting around with some drinks? It can't really be that bad. You know? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, where we went off tangent, let's say. Well, I, I'll tell you this much anyway. If, if the show is going bad, sometimes. You just drink more until it seems good to you, and then it's fine. <laughs> I, think I think they're the best ones where people have too much. Anyway, yeah, so where should we go? So, I mean, if somebody, let's say, let's imagine the viewers right now, then there's a lot of viewers who I know look at electronics, and it's like, I don't want to go there. It scares people. Yep. You know, there's, there's lots of worries. So what would you say or what tips could you give for people that want to dabble in it? Well, um, you know, I can make an analogy or I, I would think start for somebody just starting in electronics, it would be analogous to me starting in clothing. Like whenever I first started buying clothing, um, I didn't try to buy all the clothes hmm. and I didn't want to try and focus on the most expensive or best clothes. I just focused on one little niche. I went for jeans because they're readily available. They're cheap. They sell fairly easily. Uh, you're not going to get hurt bad, right? So I think that might be the right approach to take uh, for somebody that's new. And I actually, I got a few things from my storage unit today. Um, I know you squirrel away a lot of stuff in your tech cave there yes. during the year. Yes, we do. We, we, we're trying at the moment to clear the backlog and we've been trying for about six months. That's how much we squirrel away. But yeah, we do. I actually had a purge of my electronics not long ago, so I've got virtually mm -hmm. nothing left to share today. Um, but yeah, that's cool. What, what did you bring home? Well, um, okay. So you were saying where should somebody start? And it kind of depends on on what they're into, I guess. Like some people like to sell, um, okay, here's one. I don't have any of the really good ones, but I think video cameras are a really good place to start because they're pretty re readily available. They're easy to test. Uh, you'll find like, this is a Canon, uh, more modern Canon, but the ones you want to be looking for are like the Sony eight millimeters. Yeah, the handicap, Sony, handicap, yeah. right. Uh, Sony mini DVs and uh, Nick around here, we can typically pick those up for around $5 at yard sales. Mm -hmm. uh, what's it like for you guys? Yeah, I've had a few around the sort of five pound mark. I've paid more on some Sony's. I paid up to 10 mm -hmm. pounds on, on some Sony's and it's always a slight gamble because you don't know they're working. Even if the right. storeholder says, yeah, yeah, that worked last time I used it, which could have been, you know, 1999. <laughs> So it's always a bit of a gamble. But like you say, there's, there's not a great deal. You don't have to have a lot of knowledge to test those things. It helps to have a tape, obviously, but right. fairly easy. Yeah, that, that's why I like to pick up tapes, any, any kind of sealed media or media in general, anytime I see it. And then I like to have like at least a couple mini DVs, a couple of eight millimeters. I like to have keep a couple of micro cassettes on hand to test like these little guys. These little micro cassette recorders, uh, dictaphones. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I think it, we all have a little box of media somewhere yes. in, our, in our like tap codes with a VHS in it and a yep. eight tape and a and a regular cassette and everything because yeah, they're so handy. 
Yeah, and like I keep a uh, I keep a copy of I have one movie on VHS tape, and that is Grease. And every, every time I bring a VHS in that I want to test, I always pop in that copy of Grease, and then I take a quick pop snapshot on my with my phone mm-hmm. of it playing, and I put that in my eBay listing. So I've, um, I've used a, a tape that I found in a machine, which is quite common. You you know you'll set it up, power it up, press eject. There's a tape in there anyway. And I've been using the same tape for ages, which has a video of um, what's his name? Oh, crumbs! I've forgotten his name. A blind singer guy, Stevie Wonder. Oh yeah, yeah. A Stevie Wonder gig. That I've just yeah, that's that's it. I use that. Doesn't really matter what it is, just just to show that it works. That you know that that's a good point, Nick. Uh, actually, I just heard two good points. Number one, it's different for you sourcing than it is for me. Whenever I go to yard sales. I'm at somebody's house. So if I hold something up like this radio, I say, Hey, does this work? And they say, yes, it works. Mm -hmm. I know where they live because I'm in their driveway. So how likely are they to lie to me and tell me something works or they think it works? They might not always know for sure, but they're not very likely to lie to me because I know exactly where they live. You know what I mean? Now, For you, you're out in a field. They pull, they back their car in. You may never see them again. Absolutely. Yeah, you're very unlikely to. And even if you do, there's kind of an unwritten rule at a car boot sale. You buy it, it's yours. And there's very little comeback, if any. And also, yeah. talking about garage sales, have you ever said to somebody, can you just plug this in? Have you tested it there and then with electronics? I typically don't uh, test. Sometimes I will. Most Nick, to be honest, most of the stuff I'm picking up is usually like one, two, three, five dollars. Right. You know, I give it a good look, see, I ask them about it. The only time I will test stuff, uh, typically the only time I'll test stuff is if it has moving parts. Like if you're going to buy, say, a double deck cassette deck, uh, those have a really high fail rate. And, but there again, if I'm going to be paying like, two, three, five dollars, a lot of times it's better time spent for me just to buy it and get on to the next sale because time is of the essence. Yeah. Plus, I mean, we've chatted about this before. Um, I think when I was chatting with Zaheer, if you're buying quality, it'll have values as not working. Mm-hmm. You know, if you buy yep. vintage Sony or, or Philips or whatever, even if worst case scenario, you can't get anything out of it. It doesn't even fire up. I've sold stuff, you know, for still good margin totally not working so it's not a complete loss if it's quality and it doesn't work yeah exactly case in point if you guys are here here's another this is a great beginner i think we all know about these right you know just sony walkman right they're just so cool looking it just takes you back yeah look this one has a three band graphic equalizer on it right (laughs) so but yeah just like that but here's the deal with these is it, yeah, you can pick them up for like a buck or two typically uh, or a quid or two or whatever, you know, whatever your currency may be. But man, these have a super duper high fail rate. Like, well, the, the rubber like bands in those, mm-hmm. the drive belts perish, don't they? I think that's the common fault. Yes, the, the belts, the belts fail. So I picked this one up for a buck. I tested it uh, about two months ago. I think I tested this thing and it didn't work. You know, it, it, the belts are, the belts are, you know, uh, dry rotted or whatever happens to them. So, uh, I looked it up as is it's worth about 30 bucks. Yeah. Working. It's worth closer to a hundred. This, this particular model, this is a little better than a normal model. Okay. So, um, what do I do? I should have just sold the damn thing for 30 bucks. But no, Lonnie has to go and order a belt off of eBay for like seven bucks. <laughs> and I've had that belt sitting in an envelope for the past two months and I still have this thing. So, yeah, very similarly, I said I, I, I purged all of my electronics, but I had a still do a cine projector from the 1960s, which had a, a rotted belt in it took it out, ordered the part exactly as you just, just described, <laughs> and it's still sat in a box, one of these boxes at the back here. 
all I've got to do is replace the belt. It was easy to get out. It's easy to get back in, but yeah, still haven't done it. And that's getting on for like six months later. Yeah. Here, I see a good question in the chat, Nick. Um, are people buying these to use or collect, do you think? I think a lot of it is collectors who want that tangible thing that they had when they were 15. And, you know, I've been there. I've looked for some of the stuff from my youth and you just get excited about it. And I think so a lot of it is that then there are collectors. There are collectors of Sony. You know, and I can imagine their rooms just displayed with all of this stuff up. But I think also, I don't know if you've ever actually known that you've sold to someone like this, but there are prop buyers. Um, I know I've got friends who have sold to, you know, film studios, TV studios and stuff mm -hmm. like that. You imagine like the Stranger Things show, which is huge at the moment. Our family is totally obsessed with that. I, I found myself looking at the sets. All of that stuff has been sourced probably most from eBay. You know what I mean? And a lot of this stuff is going to sure to set designers and and prop, people who've sourced props. So yeah. yeah, have you ever sold to someone like that? Yeah, I sold. Uh, I had a couple of cool rotary telephones, and these actually had uh, one of them actually had the a little red light that would light up when a phone call came in. Oh, cool! And yeah, it was pretty neat. It was pretty awesome. Um, I think I might have gotten fifty bucks a piece for these phones. You know, but uh, yeah, the Astronauts Wives Club was a TV show that I don't even know if they made it a whole season here in the States. Mm. But uh, yeah, they, they bought them. And I'm sure I've had a lot of other stuff get bought for props. And I didn't even know it, yeah. you know. So the only reason I knew that one was because the lady asked me to make sure to include an invoice because she needed it for her set or something. I don't know, but I can't remember what it was, but yeah. that was like one of only, I think five invoices I've ever sent with a package. So I remember it pretty clearly. Yeah. We've sold a few. I think one of ours was a phone and I think that went to a theater. So I assume for a stage set, you know, they, they needed a vintage looking retro yeah. phone. This was a phone from the seventies or something, but I Here's love that. I love, I love, getting a little insight into the, the future life of your item. I just think that's so cool. Yeah. I actually watched like 30 minutes of the first episode and because I wanted to see if I could spot my phone. Right. Yeah. And, and oh, actually, you know, John Cincinnati Picker, he is sold. He's got a contact with a prop company lady comes over and she buys like in bulk from him. So he's got like a really good connection. He's got, like a lot of stuff that's probably in, uh, you know, like major motion pictures. So that's pretty cool. Wow. But that's yeah, awesome. uh, I was, uh, let me finish that thought real quick. I was just going to say, I tried to see my phone, but the show was so bad. I couldn't watch anymore. So I turned it <laughs> off. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, just having a scroll through the chat. Yeah. Man, your chat is so crazy busy. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Um, oh, Steve and Steph are in there. Hi there, guys. It's the um, and Joy says, Nostal nostalgia is great. Selling memories, basically. That's what it is. And a lot of what we do is is supplying that memory fix to people, isn't it? You know, the, the whole video games market, the retro games market, it's people like us buying back what we played. And it's just uh, the same with a lot of this electronic stuff. Man, and you know, um, I love electronics, Nick. And like you said, I've branched out to other stuff. But a lot of times I'll buy and sell electronics, even if the margins aren't awesome, just because I love fooling with that stuff. I love possessing that thing for just a little bit yeah. and then bringing it on to the next person that loves it too. Mm -hmm. That like, I wouldn't do it for free, but I'll take a lower margin to work with stuff I really like if yeah. I have to, you know? Yeah. I had, a, I had a message on my channel the other day from somebody that I was sharing some sales I'd had of gaming stuff. And they were like, how do you not keep it all? And <laughs> right. I'm like, I'm kind of over the collecting. And I feel like mm -hmm. I, I just, I have this stuff and I own it for as long as it takes to sell it. Sometimes I will, you know, I'm not in a hurry to sell some stuff. And I right. had to talk to myself recently with the consoles I was selling off. I had to say, look, Nick get realistic with your prices this stuff has to go i had to have that conversation i adjusted a few prices put offers on and the whole lot's pretty much gone now i've got one super nintendo left but 
yeah i'm happy with that because i know as well i'll pick them up again in the future and i can play with them again but when i was collecting i wasn't really using the stuff it wasn't getting you know it was a bit of a a waste of time in some respects but i had that collector in me and if i if i go down that slippery slope it gets a bit crazy so i try not to well you know how you can kind of um take care of that urge too is that you have a collection of photos you have a collection of videos you can go back and watch yourself enjoying that item on a video you recorded a year ago right yeah so like you have that memory and you have that you know that item and like stuff that i buy and sell it's always something that i feel like i still have because i have the memories because i do a youtube channel and i do instagram and i have photos on my hard drive so we still have the stuff it's just not like physically with us yeah you know but there is, there is an ongoing temptation to keep this stuff and it and it's a battle to to resist sometimes because i mean that the way i got into this was collecting computer games and and this kind of replaces that that habit and that need I collect it, but then I sell it on. And I've kind of got, you know, I've got my head around that now. Just about. Okay, let's see what's going on in the chat. Um, oh, yeah, Jory's still in there. Jory collects, doesn't he? He's got a cool collection, actually. I, I think Jory may be, like, I don't know if you've done a video game episode yet for this line of uh, this series of videos. Um, yeah, we we did that um, one with Darren. We did, but yeah, I need to get Jory on actually because we've got a lot to talk about. <laughs> about Jory, Jory has got the most. I don't know, man. I think I've never stumped Jory yet. Like typically, I'll be like, "Hey, Jory, uh, let me tell y'all," but and then he'll like have my amount of knowledge times ten on just about everything I've ever talked to him about. Mm -hmm. Like every time I talk to Jory, I feel dumber, not because he made me dumber, but because I just feel like I didn't know anything at that point. You know, <laughs> like yeah. I started talking to Jory about video games one time, Nick, and he said, oh, yeah, check out my room. And he's one of these guys. He's got the collection that takes up a whole friggin room. Yeah. You know, that that's where if I let myself start keeping hold of this stuff, I'd get there in no time because I just I'd go nuts for it. So I have to resist maybe one day. Yeah, I follow a lot of channels. I kind of collect sort of through these other collecting channels. I'm, I'm quite obsessed about channels that collect video games. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I'll have to message you, Joey, if you want to come on and we'll have a chat about your collection and, and collecting games. That would be fantastic. Um, so, yeah, what else? So a good way in then you were saying would maybe to be to pick a niche or start with the simple stuff you were saying about video cameras. Or yeah, because like or like stuff that's cheap, like video cameras. The walk I would say Walkman, but like I said, there's a high fail rate. So be be prepared for that. Although it's an easy test, and like you say, you can sell most of that stuff. You know, uh, y'all call it we call it parts not working. Y'all call it spares repairs. I know. Yeah. Um. Uh. You know, radio. Like okay, here's another one. Stereos are out there. You know, like the big. Uh, a you know, component. Button. Yeah, like, you know, just a component type stereo. Oh, yeah, like uh, we call them like stacking systems. Those. Stack right. And, you know, there's not going to be typically, there's not going to be a ton of money in that kind of stuff. Like, I think the average stereo receiver that I would pick up around here, probably pay about five bucks for it, probably sell it for about 60 plus shipping on top. So, and then as part of that, you're going to have to, um, and that same thing applies to like VCRs. You see a lot of VCRs, uh, our VCR DVD combos, yeah, uh, those kind of electronics. You're looking at like buying for five, selling for 60 to a hundred. Um, you'll have to do a little testing. You're going to have to do a lot of packing. You know, that's the pain point for most people, I think, is the shipping of that stuff. Yeah. I was just thinking about, you said, you mentioned stereos and, and like separates, like stacking systems. I've had the best um, returns on the amps. You know, if, the, if there's, you know, separates and one of them is an amp, they, they tend to make more money than like a CD player or a tape deck or whatever. Yeah, so, I don't buy, I, I don't buy CD players hardly ever or dvd players even every now and then uh 
for one, it's, you know, uh, moving parts and moving parts is always a danger area. Like mm -hmm. a stereo, like, like you say, an amplifier or a stereo receiver, no moving parts. You don't have any belts to wear out. You know, you have no motors to give out or anything. They're usually going to work. Um, so when you're, when you're typically out and about, are you looking for brands? Would you say that's your first point of contact or are you looking for something that looks old? What's going through your head? If you're, if you, if you get to a table and you, sometimes you rock up at a stall and it's like, they've got a lot of electronics. So what are you looking for? What's your, what are you honing in on? Uh, yeah, you're looking for brands. Like, uh, you, you've talked, I see Zahir here, there in the chat talking about, um, uh, I want to read this comment because I think it's a good one. Love big, heavy separates. The size also is good for putting most people off picking them up. So less competition. That is, that's the great point there is that they are a pain in the butt to ship, right? Mm -hmm. So that keeps people from picking them up. If those things were this size and you could ship them like in a small box, we wouldn't be able to find that stuff. It would already be picked over. So, um, yeah, man, brands are good. Like, um, you know, I'm always going after Sony. Uh, and then once you get into the older stuff, you have like Marantz, uh, Panasonic. Yeah. You have all these, all these brands and a lot of them are Japanese. You know, that's, that's some of the higher quality stuff. Um, I, I hesitate to say like high end or high quality or anything like that with Zaheer around. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause just laugh. Yeah. Also there's, it, it pays to kind of learn what the in-store own brands are called because over here we had a couple of big stores like Dixon's and Curry's. They had their own kind of imported brand. Mm -hmm. And if you can learn what a few of those are and not necessarily avoid them completely, but know that they're not worth spending much on because they're kind of the entry level bog standard stuff. Right. Um, like we had a uh, brands like, uh, York's and um, man, GPX, uh, just some like really off brands like that around here. Mm. I don't fool with that stuff. You know, I stick to like the Japanese, you know, I'm, I'm looking for so like for modern stuff. Uh, like when it comes to like, uh, you know, like these little cassette things and stuff like that, you want to stick with like Sony Panasonic um, Olympus is an okay one for the cassette stuff. Um, Made in Japan is always a good thing. Yeah. Yeah, and um, Germany is a good one. That's going to be a little higher in, but yes, mm. for sure. For sure. Yeah. Hey. Zaheer's just said Matsui is one of the ones over here, and I think Seisho was another of those sort of cheap entry-level high street store own brand sort of thing. Yeah. In fact, Zaheer worked in Dixon's, I believe. That's where he met his wife. <laughs> You know, it's pretty funny. Like a lot of, if you really research some of these brands, like especially in the seventies and eighties, a lot of these different names on these, you know, different brands, they have all these different brands, but they're all made by the same. There's only a couple of real manufacturers mm -hmm. and they just branded them on the way out. Exactly. It's just a label. I would imagine, isn't it? They just, they've branded right. it for a store. The store has paid them to brand a certain boom box with their, logo and that's it yeah yeah it makes sense and then the, then the good stuff that they actually put out they put their own name on <laughs> jory uh good use goods is saying uh dura brand fluid emerson insignia all brands to not touch yep that's true i don't recognize them <laughs> i guess well, they're american brands. <laughs> yeah they must be american brands i'm sure but they're just probably rebadges of that same crap y'all have hmm. badged under some other name there have you ever picked up the older on the shoulder boom boxes much? Do you, do you find many of those? You know, the ones I mean from the eighties when it was cool to walk down the street with a massive thing on your shoulder. I, I haven't found a ton of like really old ones. Like if you look at, I tell you guys a good source for, um, for vintage electronic gear is of course Craigslist Hunter. I'm probably not telling anybody anything they don't know, mm -hmm. but he picked up a, uh, like an eighties, I think it was a, Quasar was that the I think that might be the brand I um I think it was I think that's what it was but yeah um I don't see that many I do pick up even modern 
uh, Sony and Panasonic jam boxes. That we call them jam boxes. I've heard them called jam boxes, boom boxes, ghetto blasters. Ghetto blasters, <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, certainly boom boxes and ghetto blasters over here. They they were they were termed that. But yeah, I've I've never really found any of those. Um, I've got a friend. Um, his YouTube channel was uh, Tez Nutkins. He he's found some really nice ones, and I think Zahir has as well. But I just don't see them. I don't know why. Perhaps I'm not tuned into that. But yeah, I find them. I find like when I say modern, I say like 1990s. I don't see the 80s stuff out there too much now. Um, but I, I see a lot of 90s, and you could pick them up for like you know, like I say, two, three, five dollars, mm -hmm. and you can flip them for you know, somewhere around the Seventy to a hundred dollar range, a lot of times. So, yeah. and definitely with those, it's not a big issue if they're not working. I'm sure they're getting bought up for display pieces or for movies or or, or whatever it is, because I've seen people talk about selling not working. Usually, the tape decks go because the belts are gone or whatever, and it's just not an issue. I guess there are people that repair them and then sell them on as well. But, yeah. So, how about um, one thing that I've started to get into? um i guess it's to his influence is is the little discmans i find mm -hmm. again you, it, it is dependent on brand a lot of that um so sony are good panasonic are good do you pick up many of those i do i pick up a lot and um the, you know we're not talking huge money here no. like a lot of times i'll pick up uh that's really a good beginner product because it's I find a real low fail rate on those those disc mans. They they seem to always work for me. Yeah, I I've had one that hasn't worked out of maybe ten I've picked up in the last twelve months. Yeah, I, that that's probably about where I'm at, or maybe even better. Mm. Uh, and and they're they're super easy to test. You just need a CD, pop it in some headphones. There's yeah. so there's very few buttons to test, and yeah, they're oh. great. Oh, you know what? I, I'm I'm sitting here talking about disc mans. Uh, actually, I. I recently, like a month ago, I picked up like one of the first ones. Yeah, I saw um, a video you made, didn't you? Yeah, I made a video uh, with it and I sold it. Man, I don't even remember what I sold it for. 150, I think. Was was that working? Got like it wasn't working though, was it? Or was yeah, it? no, no, it was, it was working perfect. It was oh, like right. almost almost mint condition. Uh, yeah, I bought it for I think five dollars. Wow. And flipped it for 150 pretty quick guy left feedback he was pleased as punch uh so yeah wow, that's an awesome sale and that was a, a sony yeah yeah it was it was the first uh portable cd player period of any brand so it was like early 80s cool really neat yeah. joy says lonnie that discman was so cool that's something that would have ended up on my shelf yeah <laughs> yeah Jury's got that collector bug in him for sure. And it, it sounded, man, it worked great. It sounded perfect too. Oh, maybe I should have kept it. <laughs> but but going going back to like the uh, disc mans you're talking about, like from the 90s, typically I find you're picking those up for a buck, selling them for 20, 25, 30 tops, typically, you know, and which is amazing return. Um mm -hmm. uh, and like you say, they're really, really fast to test, really easy to pack and ship and all that stuff. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, that's a bread and butter item for sure. Well, another very similar is the product you showed a while back, the little dictaphone. We call them dictaphones, those little uh, tiny cassette um, mm -hmm. players. And um, I picked up a couple. This is going back a couple of years. I've never dabbled in them. I picked two up, and I think I spent five pounds on the pair. One was a German made, oh, I think it was Braun was the, was the, the mm. make. And that was great. I think I got about 50, 60 pounds back on that. The other one was a shop owned brand. We have a, a brand of chemists here called Boots. It was a Boots owned one. It was cheap. It was plasticky. It didn't even work. That one in the bin. The other one made me good money and it had a pack of the cassettes. I think I ended up with about 12 of the cassettes. I was selling those individually for about four or five pounds each. So the cassettes put me in crazy profit. And then I sold the unit for whatever it was, 50, 60 pounds. And I was shocked. That was the first, my first attempt at selling those. But I'm surprised people want them because, you know, we've all got smartphones you can use. Right. We've all got technology that's way beyond this. Yet people still want that old 
analog technology. It's really odd. I, I think there's, okay, I also have another little quick story going back to that question, collector versus using, actually using the product. Hmm. I actually sold a, um, it was a DVD recorder slash VHS machine, Panasonic. I got like 200 and something dollars for it. It was one of the better models to get. And, you know, I did my little thing where I record a YouTube video of it. And then I put the link to the YouTube video in my eBay auction or eBay listing, I should say. And the guy, when he bought it, he said, the reason I'm buying yours, it's a little more expensive. He, he actually explicitly told me this. So it's a little more expensive, but you have a video showing it work. And uh, I've actually bought one before and it didn't, didn't work whenever it got here. So cool. He told me he had that confidence, and he also told me he was buying it for his father, who was 80-something years old, and they had bought him this unit like 10 years prior or so, maybe 15 years, and it took a long time for him to learn how to use the machine. Right. And he said rather than learn, you know, have to teach him how to use some other machine, he would rather just buy a used one of the same one, and you could just put it in, and his father would know how to use it. And I think that's a lot of where we get like DVD VCR combos, VCR sales, like VCRs. I think people are using those. That ain't, that's not collectible. Oh, yeah. I think, you know. The reason I think they're selling is because you struggle to buy one in the shops now. Have family video, don't we? It's quite mm -hmm. often on the large videotapes, if not on the, on the smaller ones, which you can get a VHS adapter for. And then, I mean, we're actually in that same boat. We had a Sony Handycam when Ellen was born, so around 2000, 2001. We can't play those tapes. So you know right. what I mean? So that's exactly who are buying these machines. It's it's like, oh, I found these this footage of our child when she was tiny, and they've got no other way of playing it apart from yep. buying the old tech or paying a company quite a lot of money to put it onto DVD. So I think that's where a lot of the business in, in that old technology comes from, is people realizing they have footage they can't even view anymore because we all, you know, when a, when a VHS player dies, typically you don't replace it these days. And that's what's happened over the last decade. Yeah, that's yeah. why th that's a really good point, Nick. And when you're selling your um, when you're selling your little handy cams, your little eight millimeter and your uh, mini DV and all that handy cams, uh, a lot of times you'll buy them and the batteries, they're, they're like old technology batteries and those things wear out. OK, and it doesn't matter. If you have the charger and that charger plugs directly into the camera, don't even worry about getting a different battery. People don't care. They're buying them for, like you say, Nick, video transfer. So you want to make sure you put video transfer, I always do, in your title for your listing whenever you're selling those older camcorders because that's exactly what they're doing. You know, I never actually, I've sold quite a few little handy cams and that sort of thing, and I never thought, that you could use them to play back. Of course you can. It makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I've never made that association. Yeah, that, that's a great, a great tip, actually. I just wanted to scroll back um, when we were talking about that great sale you had on that Sony Discman. So here said, my best personal CD player sale was a Technics. It went to China for over 200 pounds. It's just amazing what money is. He says, it was so nice. I wanted to keep it, but I'm fighting my collecting urges. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, let me just scroll through. Um, uh, Stephen Steph say, smart Lonnie, video of it working eliminates the liars who intend to state something didn't arrive working. Yeah, I mean, you, you can you can always get scammed. Like, and that's another thing, man. Like, when people start talking about electronics, I see so many times there's so many scammers in electronics. Dude, I just don't see it. I don't see that many scammers in electronics. I don't, maybe it's where the electronics that I'm dealing with in particular, you'll have the one-off story. <coughs> but uh, like if you're selling cell phones, I think you're going to get a lot of scam action. But if you're selling like cassette players and radios and stuff like that, I don't get many scammers there. Do you, Nick? Not that I've noticed. No, no more than any other niche that I'm selling mm -hmm. in. And I think the more expensive, the more the more sought after stuff stuff you sell, you get less problems. 
it's weird. I'll get more problems selling like a, a 10 or 15 pound Discman. Yeah. The, the reason for that, of course, is that they know it's cheap and they make a complaint. And the easiest thing for Nick to do is just to give their money back to them and say, forget about it. And then yeah. they keep their product. Right. So that's probably the move. I'm sure. I think, well, we, we've discussed this in recent videos. There is an, a growing trend for people to just fire out an, e an email and see if they'll get a part or a full refund. I, yep. I don't play that game. I call their bluff every time and say, send it back. I do too. And sometimes they send it back and sometimes, uh, and not everybody's lying. Sometimes I think it's a scam and it's like legit, like something happened to it or yep. I didn't test it fully or whatever, you know, so. Absolutely. Uh, oh, th there's always genuine cases, but you have to, we now have a pretty much hard policy where it's if, if you're not happy for whatever reason, send it back. And and a lot of time we never hear from them again. And then you can be pretty sure they were just trying it on. And it's yeah. it will surprise you how many people when you say, OK, sorry to hear there's whatever issue you may have just made up, send it back. And right. you'll be surprised how many people just go, OK, and disappear off the face of the earth. That, that happens a lot. It, it's a. It can be a game of chicken, though, sometimes. Like, if you sell, <laughs> that's exactly what it is, right? Like, if I sell, say, uh, a stereo amplifier, like we were talking about a minute ago, those things can weigh, like, 25 pounds. So maybe I'm getting $70 for the unit, and then the shipping I'm paying $30 for, mm. right? And so now for them to send that back to me, it's going to cost $30. If the thing really is messed up, I just paid $30 for nothing. You know what I mean? So it's really like the bigger and heavier the stuff gets, the more of a game of chicken it becomes. You have to have, uh, I guess, more you know, more nerve to play at that point. Although at least now you can, you can do a return through eBay and provide a label through eBay, and they tend to be really quite reasonable. You know what I mean? If if the if the mm -hmm. if the buyer says, "Well, I'll arrange my own shipping," they can basically charge whatever they want. You know what I mean? And then you've got to cover that. But now you can do it all through eBay, and you'll say, "I'll send you a label, a return label," and then it's and and the prices for those can be really quite sensible. So that that's actually been a game changer. That whole do the whole thing through the process through the, the official returns process that works really well. I need to mention actually before we move on, uh, JC Pounds. He says, "Great." useful info cheers guys well good uh, hopefully there'll be something that comes out of this that's useful not just uh two blokes chatting about tech uh, i wanted to show you something else i picked up a while back that maybe oh uh, here we go i found it man i know it's uh i know this doesn't come through well can you see that okay nick i can see it can an see old it? tv yeah it's a uh that is a sony trinitron little i think it was like a 13 inch tv from nine i think it was like from the early 70s it was like one of the little early portable color sony trinitron tvs found that in a um in a thrift store and it was i think two dollars and 99 cents really yes and it, it was you know the old crts they were they're kind of bulky but it wasn't too bad because it was a small tv uh, so I, I pick it up, bring it home, and uh, plug it in, and only like half the screen lights up, and I don't really have a good way to test it, and I fiddled with the knobs, and it never could get it focused, so it wasn't working. Hmm. Nick, I sold that TV for 100 bucks plus shipping. Wow. As not was working as well. Not working. And it's a, I can't remember the model number. If, if y'all look me up on Instagram, Garage Flips on Instagram, you'll see it and you'll see a little inf more information. But uh, it is amazing. It's, and sometimes you just have to have the nerve to think, I'm going to sell this. I'm going to put a hundred dollars on it or whatever, and I'm going to sell it and just see what happens. That is, that's amazing. Well, that's the interesting thing about vintage electronics is that a lot of times if you're dealing with vintage stuff, um, Nick, have you frozen? I don't know. Wait, okay. Well, you're kind of freezing on my end. I, I, I think we're good. Okay, cool. So uh, a lot of times when you're dealing with vintage electronics, uh, when you post that thing on eBay, you may be the only one there. 
you have a good shot at be, having the only one there. Like, let me show you an example. I sold this radio a while back. Uh, oh, this is an old Motorola. You've had that a long time. I'm keeping it, actually. So uh, whenever I sold it, though, the first time around, I sold it on eBay. I looked it up on WorthPoint, and the last sale was like, I don't know, 50 bucks or something. But it had been years since that radio in that color sold. Yeah. So that's one thing to remember with the vintage stuff is, or any any niche, not just electronics, if you have the only one, take a shot, take a stab, ask the big money and see if you can get it because it doesn't matter what those past solds are to your buyer if they can only buy yours. You know? Absolutely. And and also, if you maybe you are offering international, you don't know if the other one was just being sold domestic. So offer international and then your, your audience is much, much bigger. I mean, recently I sold that, that tiny little... Um, it was a watch from the 80s which had a game in it. It wasn't a Nintendo one, but it was a Castlevania one. Mm, and I the saw two that, solds, yeah. The two solds that I found were like at twenty pounds and thirty pounds, and I just thought, you know what, I'm going to start at a hundred, and then I got an offer pretty quick, um, and then we kind of went backwards and forwards, did that little dance, and then we ended up at seventy five pounds, and I thought, fair enough, and it just goes to show that, yeah, do your research and find out what things have been sold for. But when I listed it, there were none others available, so I thought, I I, I thought I was almost joking at 100 really but yeah at 75 i was happy it, it, it owed me a few pence so you, you're right and that went international i think it's i think it's good to remember that um you know especially as resellers we're pretty thrifty like we're pretty like we really value our money mm -hmm. right we really place of we really know what what things are worth and we value dollars or, or, or pounds or whatever it is um your buyer, your buyer that looks at that thing, they may have 20 million in the bank. They don't care what that thing costs. It's you true. know what I mean? You can't, yeah. you can't, you know, you can't give your value for money to your buyers all the time, especially when you're talking about unique collectible stuff, you know? It's absolutely Take true. And I, I have to keep in mind that, that ridiculous Atari sale. That, mm -hmm. that, that we had and just remember there are people out there with way more money than cents and if you can happen to have the right thing that they're looking for on that given day you can sell it i mean just what if what if bill gates is the guy that wants your thing he don't care what it costs right it doesn't price is not the issue it's do you have the item so yeah but as you were saying we're talking about hard to find stuff or right. a special color or something that that may be new in the box who else has got one that sort of stuff then you may as well think of a price and double it and start there because the other thing with that is there's nothing wrong with putting it on for a couple of cycles at, at what you think is stupid money see what happens even with offers on and then see what comes in you've got nothing to lose right and now and then you'll have other stuff like a camcorder or one of these, uh, one of these little, you know, you call it dictaphones. There, there's a set market price. It's a commodity item. You get too far out of line, you're not going to sell it, right? Exactly. So, yeah, you can't apply the logic we were just talking to to no, Sony no. Disc because there'll be 200 <laughs> other ones on eBay the day you list yours. So people will just laugh at your price. So yeah, yeah, you, uh, use that with caution. <laughs> Yes, please. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll just have a museum instead of a store. <laughs> yeah. So here's uh here's another radio. I just this is a fairly recent pickup. I just grabbed this today. Um, this guy's is actually see it's FM AM. Yeah, Nick. This radio works, and it is from 1959. This radio is 58 years old. And it works great. It's like one of the really early uh, FM radios. Most of the radios you see from that time frame are going to be AM only. Uh, so this this was really I was really surprised to see it work. And look at the condition. It's a wooden cabinet. That's the case nice. is made out of wood. Look at the condition. It looks like man. It it almost looks like it's maybe a year old, but mm -hmm. it's it's closer to sixty. And it's actually a tube. This is a tube radio. It's got like five, uh, 
by vacuum tubes in it. So. so what would you say looking at that? Let me just take the take it off you. What would you say looking at that? Because this stuff has been reproduced. A lot of the vintage radios have been reproduced. What simple thing could you say you know that's vintage just from looking at it? Oh, wow. That's a hmm. Because you know that they, they, they've remade a lot of the old stuff, haven't they? But yeah, well, I'll tell you one thing. Um, look at the bottom. Yeah. Do you see the wood grain on the bottom? I mean, that's it's pretty clear to me. It's like an awesome shape, but there's no doubt. Uh, and, and another thing, these little tabletop radios, they're usually around the $50 to $100 range in value. So it's not like it's worth so much um, that somebody would fake it. You know, right. I, I've never really heard of a fake Zenith radio before. Not, Maybe not it's so happened. Much fake ones, but I know um, a, re, a wife, repop. My wife's nan has got what looks like a 50s radio on her side, but we mm -hmm. bought it for her for Christmas like five years ago. Um, and oh. a lot of the things on those that, that I can tell is that the, the chords are different. You know what I mean? Yes. You can tell it's a modern chord. Yes, look, uh, here's a here is the cord. Now, of course, this is going to look foreign to you because it's foreign to you. <laughs> but uh, it, like it, if this was a modern plug, one uh, one side would be larger than the other to force the correct polarity, you know, like on a modern plug. Uh, oh, OK, but these are both the same size on US plugs. One one uh, set of blades, one side of the blade is like bigger than the other. So it forces you to put it in a certain orientation. This one is not, this is clearly vintage but, plug. So if you plug that in the other way around, it, it doesn't matter. matter though, no. Would it? No. it doesn't matter. No, no. it doesn't matter. <laughs> it all gets straightened out. In that, the that's electronics. a really nice looking piece actually. So what did you pay for that? And what are you hoping to flip that for? Um, I paid $10 for it. They were asking 20 and I got it for half price. Cause I bought like three different things from them. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's here. Here we go. There's two of them on um, eBay right now at a hundred bucks, but the prior solds are like some people sell stuff way too cheap. Um, the prior solds are like 30 something, 40 bucks. Um, but there's no currently not any on eBay for that price range or they're, they're at a hundred, but I'm going to take this radio. I'm going to sell it Saturday night on Dwayne Hale's auction, Mothership oh. Products auction. Are you really? Wow. So, okay. Yes, I am. But interestingly, you were saying about price on that. At this time of year, don't dismiss the Christmas mm. gift market for vintage collectible electronics because there's a lot of geeky kind of guys like us whose wives have no idea what to buy us, and they will buy us something like that, a cool thing that we would you know, see the value in and treasure. So there is a big gift market for this stuff. So don't dismiss putting it on eBay at a high price at this time of year because, yeah, those things it's, will go. Especially this one in this case because it plays AM and FM. Uh, that red one I showed you, it's really cool. It's really sweet looking, but it only plays AM. It's not near as uh, useful, you know. Um, people were talking about the radio. Um, such a good find, said Power Reselling. Um, uh, Jewelry says, we're talking, uh, when I suggest it, how would you tell it's actually vintage and not a modern remake? Smell it, says Jewelry. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Vintage. And it does. They smell, I, I call it like the granddad's house smell. Right, right. You know what I mean? Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, got that smell. Absolutely. Or like, or like the grill here is kind of fabricy a little bit, so it's going to capture more of the essence. You know, it smells like this smells like old people. It really does. That's the smell you want. And Stephen Steph said the cord. Yeah, the cord will indicate if something is a modern remake um, instantly. Uh, other people saying sniff it. Yeah, smell it, Lonnie. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> you can tell a lot by smelling things. Uh, look for uh, this is joy says look for wear as well if it looks brand new and has no dust question it yeah if something's meant to be from 1950 and there's not a mark on it unlikely it could be genuine but it's, dude, it's unlikely dude this one doesn't have a mark <laughs> i'm telling you it looks like it's, it looks it's an immaculate piece there's a sticker on the bottom look at this sticker yeah that's, that's a cool. i mean that's amazing 
and look, it, it, the, the sticker looks perfect. And let me show you how cool this is. Look, that's the serial number right here, right below my finger there. Somebody on that manufacturing line hand etched a serial number into this radio, into the wood. Isn't right. that crazy? <laughs> wow. When you could afford to pay someone to hand etch serial numbers, eh? <laughs> Yeah, that's a lovely piece. So you're going to auction that off. Wow, that's a bit of a gamble there, is it? Nah, what's the worst that could happen? I, I, you haven't probably, you may have not, I don't know if you've ever been to one of Dwayne's auctions because, I mean, the shipping to the UK is crazy. But uh, I've, I've watched some back, but I've not bid on anything. Yeah, we, we, he gets, he actually gets a premium on his auctions. We have some good bidders there. So, yeah. I'm going to do the old uh, half to the charity, half to my favorite charity, me, and then half to my other favorite charity, American Cancer Society. So uh, that's oh, going to go well. What, when is that for people watching if, if they don't know? Uh, Saturday, 7 p.m. CST. So it would be, if they want to watch, uh, it wow. would be the same time that it started. No, wrong. That's Wait, I have that flip out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be six hours from now on Saturday. So, yeah, that'd be really early. People, yeah, like one in the morning. Yeah, sort of time I used to join you guys for, for late night drinking. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, anytime you see a ra uh, radio like with tubes, though, pick those up. Those are, those are really awesome. And like you say, Nick, they don't have to work. The two I just showed do. Um, and then here's another little thing I like to sell. I like to sell, this is probably, I would imagine, 70s. This is just a little, uh, cool little Sony vintage radio. Yep. Um, people dig these. People like buying them. It's all, you know, oh, I'd probably right. get about $25 for it, something yeah, like that. Bits in that I've, I've not even tested these yet. I'll quickly show you. Oh, I don't know if you have the brand Roberts out there. Do you have Roberts radios? Uh, no, we don't, but I've seen you guys with them. Yeah, this is quite a nice. I'm guessing 70s again, maybe on this. Not tested. Mm -hmm. yet. These sometimes have those great big square batteries in. You know the ones I mean? With the two little contacts on. But yeah, that's a nice piece. Um, that's cool. And then this one, is this? What is this? This is a Grundig. So we're talking German. Oh, yeah. Look at oh, the size yeah. Of that baby. <laughs> oh, I like that, Nick. That's that's got like all the short wave bands and stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. If you look at hit here, look at all of this. It's just so cool. These are untested. Yeah. I got three actually. Let me just take that off me. Oh. oh, how do I take that off now? There we go. I got three for ten pounds. Let me find the other one. This is a modern Roberts. Roberts are still producing so that's a modern dab and these are worth picking up so that's where did you say those are made nick what's the uh origin is that like a rebadge from japan or is it made uh let's have a look this one isn't even telling me but it's it's the same brand whether it's you know yeah mm. whether they bought the license to to use it i don't know but yeah. actually i actually they, bought a i bought a uh weird looking speaker a while back like a zeppelin or something like that uh it was actually made in the uk oh yeah that go at the bottom of your telly no Long, yeah it, round thing it, it was more it was shaped like a zeppelin yeah uh and it was like chrome it was like really cool looking out um, at a yard sale i'm like hey will you take five bucks for that she said yeah and i pick it up and i look and it said made in the uk or something yeah bowers it's bowers and wilkinson that's who it was oh okay i didn't know it was a uk company but a friend of ours used to have one and it sat in front of their tv it's a cool looking thing like you say mm -hmm. but yeah that that's about it for electronics i've got at the moment like i say i cleared most of my stuff uh let's pop in here oh john cincinnati pickers in there Granddad's house smell, yeah. <laughs> Mothballs, that's the smell. Yep. <laughs> okay. Um, 
That'd be horrible if somebody came up with a spray to spray on repops to make it smell like that, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Give me a little can of uh, grandma's house spray, please. You can bet somebody has had that thought. <laughs> right. I, I know what we need to do. <laughs> oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> um, so here's talking about uh, where it's made will be a giveaway, talking about the repops again. Mm -hmm. Something that's modern. So, yeah, keep an eye out for that. Um, okay. Right, I'm just sh I'm just uh, scrolling to the end. Oh, someone's talking about me having a shave. Yeah, I had quite a beard going on. I should have kept it so I could have had a beard off with you, but I had grey <laughs> coming in mine. Oh, mine. Once mine... This once mine gets a little longer than this, it's like the gray at the end of the hairs. I don't know why, but the longer it gets, the grayer it gets. So I yeah. have to trim it up every now and then. I, I start looking like my dad's. So it <laughs> my, my dad has the full on like Papa Smurf beard these days. It's, he, looks like, he looks like Santa Claus. Yeah, if I let my beard get too scraggly, my viewers start picking on me. So I don't like to, I don't want to be the focus of all the comments in my uh, videos. So I, I trim it for them every now and then. Okay. So, yeah, how are we doing with time? Oh, we wow. We have been on an hour almost. So, yeah, I mean, that was really cool. I mean, is there anything else you could think off the top of your head that um, if people want to dabble in electronics that's worth mentioning? yeah a lot of it yeah I, I i'd say um don't be scared because typically the good thing about electronics is you're usually dealing at really high margins right you're usually paying five dollars and getting a hundred you're paying a dollar you're getting 30 so people ask all the time well what if it doesn't work what if it doesn't work it doesn't really matter that much like nick i could buy five of these at a dollar a piece if four of them don't work and i sold one of them for 30 my net gain is still crazy high mm -hmm. you know what i mean so when you're dealing with used electronics just buy it at the right price you're gonna have some fails so don't be scared to buy it that that, that, that would be my number one tip when it comes to electronics yeah just you know take a shot think think of, and think about this too if you're worried about broken stuff nick when you have something at your house and it breaks what do you do with it i throw that stuff away like i don't hold on to it oh i'm gonna put this in the storeroom and a year from now i'm gonna sell this to some sucker at a yard sale most people don't think like that you know yeah so mo it is true mo most and, stuff isn't broken and and most people are genuine and honest it's only because we remember yes. the the scammers that that we we get this overinflated idea of how many there are out there most mm -hmm. people are lovely and genuine and honest so yeah just keep that in in the fore, forefront of your mind but yeah i think electronics you're dead right it's it's about it's about jumping in and having a go because it is scary yep. to some people certain items are still kind of scary for me and i've been dabbling for many many years but it's like when i, I picked up a great big i don't remember it's about this long a radio bose radio was it bose no bang and olufsen great big thing <clears throat> from the 70s and that scared me a bit because it was worth a lot of money i invested a fair amount of money in it but it was great it sold quickly it was an international buyer and they were happy as larry and it all went smoothly i made a good return on it I don't know what I was scared of, but yeah. that, that's the best way to learn, man. Is that I do my best research after like, after I've already bought something and I'm like, okay, I'm about to sell this. That's when I do my best research. And that's when I learn the most is when I have it on hand. Um, now I'm not, I'm not paying a thousand dollars for something. That'd be a whole different ball game, but yeah, I mean, don't be, don't be scared to dabble, try it out. I mean, and then, like you say, uh, spares repairs if it doesn't work. It's cool. Yeah. And you're absolutely right. I mean, when, you, when you've when you ended up with a bunch of radios like I have, I'm going to learn about this thing because I have to now because I've got to research it to list it. I've got to find out the keywords. I've got to find out, you know, what it's all about. And then next time I go and I see some, I'll be a little bit more prepared. I'll know what I'm looking for. Probably during my research, I'll have found out which of the models that are worth money, which ones aren't. And so it goes on and on and on. And it's the best way to learn. You're absolutely right. 
and it, and it always comes back to uh, for anything clothing or or furniture or electronics if you pick something up and it feels well made like that other radio it's made out of wood uh, or some things like feel solid or they look really well made all those intrinsic values they're usually they usually hold true if it looks like it's quality it's probably worth money you know uh, so you don't really have to know electronics to spot quality electronics I think yeah you're right well on that note I think we'll wrap this one up I just want to say a quick thank you to everybody in the chat I know we've dipped in and out I'm sorry if we've missed some questions or comments um i was just too engrossed in the chat it's been too long mate we'll have to do it again or i'll have to pop over to your channel some sometime and uh we'll do something else sounds good nick i really enjoyed it bud thanks again for the invite it's been a pleasure thanks for popping in so yeah um if you haven't watched lonnie's videos you want to go and check him out i've put a link below to your reselling channel but as i've just found out lonnie has an electronics channel so <laughs> i will go and find a link to that and add that as well so yeah thanks for joining us guys if you enjoy what we do please give it a thumbs up if you're not a sub why not click the button <laughs> and uh yeah it just reminds me to say thank you again lonnie uh, we'll keep in touch and we'll do something again soon take care mate take care bye bye guys <laughs>